It's something we all need to prepare for, the potential for a zombie attack. How can the collection of Canada's Science and Technology Museums help us survive? Find out in this edition of Science Alive. I'm with Aaron Secord, she's a conservator here at the Canada Science and Technology Museums. And Aaron, so you suggest when the zombies attack, the best way to defend yourself is with a chainsaw. Absolutely. Good line up for those zombies, take the heads right off. And because it's fast and quick? Yeah, it's reliable. We in the museum have like over 30, so if you lose one, you can always come back and get another. And the particular good one about this one is the blade's already on. Yeah, blade's already on, and it's made in Canada, so you know it's going to work in our winters. But now what happens when the gasoline, kerosene, whatever you're using for fuel runs out? What, are, what becomes the next thing you can well, use? Well, next thing I would come for is our collection of scythes and blades. We have a huge amount of axes in the collection. Scythes, you get a couple feet away from that zombie, just take the head right off. Now, just so everybody knows, what, this, what does a scythe look like? A scythe has a long stick. Yeah. And then a blade, a kind of a curved blade. If you kind of imagine like the Grim Reaper walking with the scythe, it right, kind of looks right. like that. So you can really get some like some force on that thing. So Aaron, we've learned how to protect ourselves from the zombies, but now what about us as humans? What do we need to stay alive and stay healthy? Sure. Well, I imagine after the zombie attack, we're not going to have access to our regular fire, ambulance, first aid. Right. So the first thing I would go for after my chainsaw, my axe, yeah. my scythe, would be actually this um, civil defense fallout shelter medical kit. Now, maybe I'm not worried about fallout and radiation, right. but it does contain a lot of first aid supplies that would be useful, you know, after the zombie apocalypse. Now, what was this box built for? This is actually for a 300 person fallout shelter. So if you can imagine during the height of the Cold War, people were worried about atomic bombs dropping all over North America. Right. This is a kit that would be in a public building in the fallout shelter in the basement for people to use. And it's got things like phenylbarbital, swabs, penicillin, water purification tablets, all things that would be useful in a zombie apocalypse. So bandages. Yep. And Cotton but, balls. But this expired in 1967, so how much of it in it is still good? Well, a lot of the dried goods are going to be fine. I'd probably steer clear of the phenylbarbital. Right. Because it's, you know, 50 years expired. But right. I think a lot of the supplies here are useful. They're also packed and ready to go. You could just throw them in your grab bag and you'd be out of the way and clear awesome. zombies. So this box is fully tightly packed. Fully There's tightly packed. not a square bit of space in there. No, we've never opened it. We have actually studied it. With the lid closed, we actually took a bunch of x-rays of the inside to make sure that nothing's broken, there's not pills spilt everywhere, and it's right. fully intact, never been touched. Awesome, there you go. Some practical advice on what to do when the zombies attack from Erin Secord. She's a conservator here at the Canada Science and Technology Museums. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Dave.